Can you build a budget gaming setup from Amazon only and it actually be good? Well, today we're gonna find that out. Got some stuff behind us that we gotta unbox and go through and I did this budget in a very good price point. The budget I used for this gaming setup was under $600 and we're gonna get into each product and show you guys the totals. So let's get into it. Let's start with the monitor. Now this is an AOC gaming monitor. It's 180 hertz, one millisecond response time, and it's 24 inches. On paper, this thing is actually really incredible for the price point, but we got to test it out. So let's go ahead and unbox it. And yeah, I don't have a knife available, so I'm just going to use an Allen wrench. It should work the same. Look at that, like a glove, I think. That's the saying how it goes, I guess. I'm actually really struggling to open this. Okay, I need to get it. All right, I got scissors now. Let's go ahead and unbox this. How do I do this? You know, for a hundred bucks, the packaging experience is so hard, you can't even get in it. There we go. One thing about me is I hate the sound of styrofoam. It literally gives me the chills. I don't know why. Comes with an HDMI cable, power cable, some paper that's probably not useful. Power cable again to the other side of the brick, which seems like it's a screwless design, which I think a lot of monitors are going toward, and I like that. Can more monitor companies do this? Where it just clicks in like that? That's beautiful. Oh my gosh. And it also is surprisingly pretty light. Here's the monitor right here. Well, there we go. The next product we got on the list is the actual PC. Well, let's grab the box, shall we? The PC I bought is the Dell RGB Gaming PC. This PC was $436.39. It has an Intel i7 and a GTX 1660 Super 6 gig. So we're gonna test this out and see if it's actually good for gaming. For 436 bucks, I'm not expecting much, but we're gonna try it out. Also, something to note about this is it came with a keyboard and mouse. They probably aren't the best, but I thought that would be a money saver for people who are just on a budget. That way, I don't have to uh, buy a keyboard and mouse, and I know you probably could buy a better one on Amazon, but at least you get a keyboard and mouse with it. That way you don't have to buy another one for that price of 400 and something. So here is the keyboard and mouse combo. It doesn't look like it's the best in any way, but this looks pretty cool. I like the packaging, at least it's in a combo, so we'll put this off to the side. Let's unbox the PC. So it doesn't come with a box, which is the RGB for the fans, the power cable, and a USB dongle for something. Oh, it's a Wi-Fi dongle. That's actually a really nice addition. I think that most people don't have ethernet, so that's really nice that they put a Wi-Fi dongle in there. Okay, I got it out, but I need to set it somewhere. <laughs> so this is the PC right here. Oh, this is a gaming PC. So let's open up the side and see what we got. So at this price point, you're probably not gonna get anything custom chassis, but there's a few things we do look for when we open these up. I mean, obviously it looks like more of an office PC with a GTX 1660 Super, so that is in line with what we said. But it looks like there's an SSD right here, which I don't know how big it is. That's probably for Windows. And then there's a hard drive below it, which you guys can see is right here. Okay, so there's a hard drive, SSD, and a DVD player, which is kind of crazy to see that. And then the 1660 Super does have power, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, so this is the inside of the PC. All right, so let's unbox the keyboard and mouse now that came with this. Let's check it out. This keyboard and mouse combo comes with the PC that you get. Go ahead and open it. Oh, there's some things I need to cut really quick. Okay, as I expected, I mean, it's going to be a membrane keyboard for sure. I mean, it, it'll work, you know, if it's your first PC, it'll work. It's not the best, but at least it's something. At least it's better than nothing. So here's the gaming mouse right here, and it does look pretty cool. Scroll actually feels pretty nice, and it does feel pretty light. So hopefully the technology in it's good, but yeah, this mouse looks pretty good. Let's talk about the last product that I have for this setup, and this is the headset. Now, I always recommend the Logitech headset that I've recommended in the past, but this headset might be a new story. Get it out, get it out! This is the H3 by Fifine, and I don't like Fifine as a brand at all. Any creator that promotes Fee fine is most likely not getting a bag. They are most likely getting scanned behind the scenes. So I don't usually promote Fee fine at all, but this headset looked pretty decent for the price. I mean, this was 34 bucks, I'm pretty sure. It looks pretty good with good packaging. I had a lot of solid reviews, so I was gonna test it out and see. Usually I don't like working with Fee fine ever. I've never have and never will. This headset looked good for the price and I thought I would recommend it, even on my own biases. But let's get this unboxed and let's get into the setup here. So it looks like it comes with a little pamphlet. Looks like a couple different connections here if you need to, like the mic and the splitter. Very good flex. I mean, it seems pretty nice. All right, let's set up this PC and monitor setup here. Let's get the power cable done. Power cable being plugged in. You're probably wondering what mouse pad I'm gonna use in this setup. Well, this is the monochrome swirl in white, and I really like this mouse pad. This is from gutsyaden.com, and obviously I'm gonna do a little self promo, but they're only 36 bucks right now because they're 20% off. So if you guys wanna check them out, you guys can check out any of my designs on gutsyaden.com. I thought I would throw this in there. We also have different sized mouse pads like the 18 by 16 and the 13 by 11 for more budget options. So you can go with those if you need to, and they still have the designs on them. So let's throw this in the setup, shall we? PC plugged in, do I have a display port cable? Display port going in, baby. Bang, AOC. Gotta get the power cable. Boom, boom. And we have light. That was just stupid. Don't edit that, Michael. Don't put that in. 
that. Okay, keyboard plugged in. Get all this trash off of there. Now, all we gotta do is put the mouse pad in the setup, so let's do that last. Since we don't have ethernet, let's get this little guy in there so we have an internet. Bet, okay, that's plugged in. I think we're ready to go to test it now. Now, in this budget, I didn't include a chair or a desk, and the reason being is because I'm focusing on the tech of the setup, and I will already assume you have some sort of chair or a desk you could put it on, even if it's like a kitchen countertop or, you know, somewhere to put a setup, so I'm not including the Mavix desk. Now, this desk is by Mavix. It's a sit-stand desk, and I'm also gonna be using a Mavix M9, which is definitely not budget by any means, but it fits in the setup and it works, so we're gonna use that. <laughs> All right, let's turn on the PC and see if it works. Dang, we got RGB in the front too, shit! 4i7, huh? All right, let's see if it turns on. Hopefully it boots. AOC logo on. Once the whole setup was put together, I let the computer run for a bit and install all the necessary updates, like drivers, game platforms, etc. After a little bit, all the games were installed and it's time to test them. Yeah, I noticed when I went into the files is that there is a 200 gig SSD for Windows. There's also a four terabyte hard drive on this system for all your games, which is honestly a pretty good deal. The first thing I needed to do was test it with 3D Mark. 3D Mark benchmarks your PC and compares it with a score compared to other PCs in that range. On Firestrike, I saw 12,493, and honestly, I was pretty impressed. Now that this setup is built, let's go ahead and test it in games. I'm honestly really intrigued to see how these games run. I mean, again, this setup was only $574, so I'm not really expecting much, but we'll see. Let's get into the first game, which is Valorant. Well, the first game I loaded up was Valorant, and yes, Valorant is a CPU more intensive game. In the range, when I loaded up, it was around 280 FPS, and then when I actually started playing, it was around like 100 150 consistently. Although it did have some stuttering overall, it still was a very pleasant gaming experience for the most part. The only problem I was really having here was the actual mouse wasn't tracking very well and it really threw my aim off. All right, I guess another thing is to just uh, something to note about the headset. I mean, it's 34 bucks. It does have a little bit of flex as you guys can see, but the ear cups do feel a little cheap. I mean, at 34 bucks though, you can't really complain. It does feel pretty comfortable and lightweight, but the only thing that I don't like about this headset is how much it clamps your head. It feels like I'm like getting squeezed together. A comfortable headset should just kind of rest on your head instead of like, like snapping to your head. But also something to know about this headset is it feels super bass boosty, like, like I don't know how to explain it. If I'm being completely honest with y'all, don't ever buy that headset. What I'm gonna do, oh shit, is I'm gonna recommend a better headset that I've recommended in the past. This is the Logitech G432. This headset is $37 refurbished on Amazon. It's $4 more than this, but this is way better quality than this shit. So. I'm gonna throw that away and I'm not even gonna use the fee find shit. Don't ever buy that shit. Let's hop on to Overwatch. This game might not be my favorite. All right, we're in Overwatch right here. Let's go ahead and get into the quick play. We're gonna do a little damage. We'll be doing a little damage. Uh, 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 uh. But after some solid games in Valorant, it was time to move on to Overwatch. Where overall, I was seeing an average of about 150 FPS across the board and the game did feel pretty smooth to play on. Although my gameplay in Overwatch is an eyesore, the game wasn't at all. It felt smooth and easy to hit shots and it did feel like a pretty good gaming experience. But I wanted to test it up a notch because I felt like it was too good to be true and I launched Fortnite. Now I will be honest though, I did put it on performance mode and it did run really smooth. On average, I was seeing around 150 FPS, which seems a little low, but for the most part, Fortnite is a tough game to run. Especially in end games or things like that, like build fights, it does tax on your PC a lot. And since this mouse doesn't have any side buttons, it made my life so terrible. I can't stress this enough, get another mouse, please. All right, you guys get the point, man. So what are my final thoughts? Should you buy the setup if you're on a budget? Honestly, yes. The only thing I would change about this setup is the keyboard and mouse. I feel like I found myself struggling to play against how bad the keyboard and mouse was. So if you have a little bit more budget, like maybe 20, 30 more dollars, you probably could buy the Razer Viper Mini to replace the mouse. And the keyboard wasn't too bad actually. So it was just the tracking on the mouse. For some reason, this mouse just doesn't have any tracking at all. And it just does not work like I thought it would. So. I also don't recommend that Fee Fine headset. I couldn't even use it, it was that bad, so I wouldn't recommend using it yourself. The G432s are a really good option for budget headphones, and Logitech is always just a solid brand to go with in general. But overall, this setup, honestly, I'd rate it like a solid eight out of 10. I mean, you got good gaming performance, PC for how cheap it is actually performed, and came with a four terabyte hard drive and an SSD for Windows. Like, that is very, very unheard of. So you can put like one or two good games on your SSD, and then you can put all the other games you rarely play on the hard drive. And I think that's just such a really nice feature. I think for the amount of games you can play on 
on this and the actual, just to have a PC, this is pretty damn solid. Like and subscribe and tell me what video you guys want next and if I should try more budget options like this. Anyway, deuces.